But what happened, I, I, I had been over earlier saying I'd, I'd be back with my phone, and um, in the cafe I, I met Tom Dixon, who I'd spoken to a little bit earlier, and he said, well, I could come back to the studio, which is fantastic. Thank you very much for coming. Ah, you're very welcome. Because I know it's a busy day. It's a busy day, but you're only a stone's throw from the library. I'm a bit closer into the... Yeah, no, you're only a stone's throw from the library, so it's no, no bother to come in. So it's, um, I'll, I'll find to do work. We have done phone-ins to the studio, and it does work, but for you being here is a lot better. So, Tom, tell me a little bit about the, about the library. It's open today. Yeah, it's, it's an exciting day. Um, Extra Library is reopening to the public after a two-year refurbishment. Um, it's looking fantastic. It's very busy in there at the moment, as, as you might guess. Um, I think it's a 1965 building, which, to be fair, had got a little tired over the years. Um, and so a significant sum of money, about £4 million, has been invested in refurbishing the library and I think you'll agree you've seen it today it's looking absolutely stunning and the the feedback from visitors and customers is is amazing I think people are really enjoying the the new look and the feel of the place so the, the stock of books is is much the same would you think so the stock has been significantly refreshed and replenished so I think people will be I hope they'll be very surprised actually um, it's been reorganized and, and the layout is different from how it was previously but we think that's a, a massive improvement you know particularly with the the children's library now occupying the reference section and we've opened up access into Rougemont Gardens uh, people can now walk through and see Rougemont Gardens and, and the cafe of course the cafe is a big improvement on this show we, we we tend to obsess about coffee we're here for two hours you see <laughs> and we're not allowed our liquid it, it will ruin the equipment well, that's, so, that's tough, isn't it? No, it I, is. I, I'm a fan of my double espressos, I have to say. So, <laughs> the technology direction uh, we want to go in is broadcast quality uh, MP3 files from a coffee, a coffee source, so a cafe, a library. We don't really mind mm. where it is, as long as we can broadcast and drink coffee. Get yourselves over there. I'm sure we can sort something out. <laughs> so, that's a long-term aim. We can, <laughs> we can work, work towards that. No problems. Because the, the projects that you that you particularly work on, should we talk about the Fab Lab first of all? Yeah, so I am uh, work for the economy team at Devon County Council and um, we've been trying to get this idea of a Fab Lab off the ground for a couple of years now and we're very excited that today we're able to offer a preview of the first Fab Lab in a public library in the UK, we think. Um, what is a Fab Lab? A Fab Lab is all about low-cost digital making so it's it's providing people with access to some of the really exciting cutting edge equipment that's coming onto the market now so everybody's heard of 3d printers now well we've got five of them five and coming in june we'll have one of the very latest um, maker bot z18s one of the first in the country so and as a member of the public in due course you'll be able to come in and, and have access to this kit at a very low cost and we're very excited about that throw in laser cutters cnc routers um, sublimation printers you name it there's going to be a really great portfolio of equipment in there and we're very excited that we're going to be able to offer access to this to anybody across devon so what schools are involved already, do you think? Well, we've been doing a lot of outreach activity to establish what the demand is and to make contact with schools that are interested in doing this. Um, we've called the project Fab Lab Devon, and we're very excited that um, Kevick, King Edward VI Community College in Totnes, came on board very early. Um, they're very enthused and committed to product design, prototyping, and we're going to be working with Kevick to open up their workshops they've got some great facilities and we're looking to open those up as as a public access fab lab uh, i don't know what the name is fab lab totness something like that um we've also got exeter college on board as a partner uh, in exeter and um, with a bit of luck come september they'll be operating the fab lab and um, we've so we forged a very strong relationship there and we're also very keen to make sure that we take the whole message and equipment out on the road across Devon. Um, the whole point of this project is to ensure that people in rural parts of Devon, we're a very rural county, have access to this equipment. So we're talking about running pop-up fab labs, we're talking about running workshops with schools, and some of the funding we've got is there to really help us take some of this digital making equipment out on the road. So do you mind, I'm kind of going a bit, a bit off topic here, um, just because we've got a, a question I'm going to ask next week, 
um, and it seems to fit. So if I get in the complete mud, uh, JD will be ready with a track of music. No worries. We'll regroup afterwards. <laughs> um, at the, the TEDx talks that was in, in Exeter not long ago, there was quite a lot of discussion about the curriculum for computing at O level, A level. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And I was there, yeah. The emphasis seemed to be on coding. Very much on on the on the on the coding level as being a, a high priority it, with the new new curriculums. Just to, let me just explain this a little bit as to what what struck me and what what interests me about it. So that was sort of contrasted with the ICT as it has been, which was a, a sort of skills level, and there was almost nothing at all about digital literacy. In other words, as I understand it, just using computers and technology in the course of everything else that goes on. So I, I, what, what you're doing is seems to be at the other end from coding, but maybe it isn't. Maybe the things no, fit I'm, together. They fit together very well. Um, we are doing a great deal with Raspberry Pis and with coding. You're probably aware we already run Raspberry Pi jams in the library where... Uh, you, you know, you're familiar with the Raspberry Pi? I've, I've seen the Raspberry Pi. little Pie. programmable device, um, which is really great for getting kids and, and older people enthused about coding. Um, and in the Fab Lab, we're going to be building on that, so you'll be able to code and work with your Raspberry Pi, but there'll also be an electronics bench so that you can perhaps connect it to something like an Arduino sensor, which enables it to become quite an interactive little tool. Um, and so, no, I think the coding piece and the electronics pieces is very much part of the package we're looking to offer in Fab Lab. We're already running Raspberry Pi jams. I think the next one is on the 7th of June, but don't quote me on that. Check the website. Um, and we've also, the library has now become a registered um, centre for running Code Club, which again is, is about infusing young people about programming, about coding. And so, no, I would very strongly uh, emphasise the link to coding, to digital making, and that it is about about trying to encourage people to be creators and not consumers. So putting the tools into people's hands, young people and old, for them to be able to make and do and program the equipment and objects that they want to do. Okay. Well, look, I have, have got some more questions, but I think we should just break for some sounds and uh, come back just, just after this next... For sure, no problem. Next track.